Greetings everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. In this video, we will cover the topic of trigonometry. Uh, it's one of the most problematic topics for students as most of the time they find it very confusing. One thing we promise after these videos, you will find trigonometry very easy. So let's get back to our topic. So trigonometry is a branch of mathematics that's, that focuses on relationships between the sides and angles of triangles. Since trigonometry focuses on relationship of sides and angles of a triangle, let's go over how angles are measured. So angles are formed by an initial side and a terminal side, as you can see here. So an angle is measured by the amount of rotation from the initial side to the terminal side. Okay, so this is our angle here. So a positive angle is made by a rotation in the counterclockwise direction. As you can see here, we have a positive angle and neg an, a negative angle is made by a rotation in the clockwise direction. It can be, it should be like this. So let's continue with the, uh, with the degrees and radians. Angles can be measured in two ways, degrees and radians. So what is the degree? A circle is comprised of 360 degree, which is called one revolution. So this circle, as you can see here, it starts with zero degree here, and then it goes like 45, 90, 135, 5, till 360 degree. So in this one tour, we called, is, uh, we called it as one revolution. So what is the radian? One revolution measured in radians is 2p, which means here 360 degree in radians it's equal to 2p. So uh, here p is uh, the constant approximately 3.14, uh, 3 right? So here also it starts with 0 and then p over 4, p over 2, uh, 3p over 4 till 2p it goes and this is one revolution. So as we said before, 360 degree is equal to 2p radians. Right? You will, you can see, like you will see some problems about this. It will say like uh, convert uh, this degree to the uh, to the radians or this radians to the degree. So in the, in those kind of questions, you will need these formulas. So 360 degrees is equal to 2p radians, which is equal to one revolution right here. So which which is also means which also means 180 degree is equal to p radians and one degree is equal to p over 180 radians. Let's solve some examples and you will uh, you will understand better. Let's look at these examples. Now, in the first example, we have convert 60 degrees into radians. So, as we said before, uh, one degree is equal to p over 180 radians, right? So, if this is the case, we can find a 60 degree easily. So, all we need to do is multiply 60 by this value. So, uh, 60 degrees times p over 180, which is equal to, when I uh, simplify this from here, we will get p over 3 radians. In our second example, it says convert 3p over 2 radians into degrees. So here we will do the uh, opposite. So uh, here, we, uh, here as, we, uh, as we learned before, 180 over p is equal to, this is degree, uh, this is equal to 1 radian, right? So we know this radian, all we need to do is multiply these two together. So from here it's 180 over p times 3p over 2. So when I, uh, when I simplify this, these p, these cancel out each other. And here we have 90, so this is equal to 270 degrees. 
Now let's continue with the unit circle. Unit circle is a very, very important topic. That's why I want you to listen this part very carefully because the information here, we will use these info informations through all the trigonometric uh, topics. So let's begin. The unit circle is a circle that is centered at the origin and always has a radius of one. The unit circle will be helpful to us later when we define trigonometric ratios. Also, we will use, actually, even we, we, we use this information uh, on our geometric classes. So, uh, as we said before, a positive angle is made by a rotation in the counterclockwise direction, right? So, a positive angle goes like this and a negative angle is made by a rotation in the clockwise direction so a negative angle goes like this right so let's look at this point p let's say we have a we have an angle here as alpha okay so we have this point p here so this x is on the on this x axis which is here is equal to x and we have y here which is equal to actually this uh, this uh, length. So here is our y, right? So as we know from um, from right triangles that x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, right? We know this. x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. As you can see, this is an equation of unit circle. So you have to know this for sure. So uh, this x, uh, the x and y axis divide the, this x y plane into four quadrants. This this part is called as quadrant one. This part uh, is called as quadrant two, and this part is quadrant three, and this one is quadrant four. Now let's look at these unit circles and let's see how the length of x and y change when we change the angle. Let's start with this 30, uh, 30 degrees angle here. So when I draw my right triangle from this point to x-axis, let me draw like this. As you can see here, the, uh, the length of x-axis is larger than the y-axis, right? Here is x and here is y. So when we look at this 60 degrees, let me draw also here my right triangle. And here, the length of x is shorter now. As you can see, here is x and here is y, right? So the length of y is uh, actually larger uh, than the length of x. As you can see, depending on the angle, the length of x and y are changing. So let's make uh, another degree, let's say uh, 135 degrees, okay? So here is 90 degree, right? 135 would be something like this and here will be 45 degrees and total is 135 degrees. So here, here I will uh, draw my uh, right triangle as you can see. So here is my x, uh, the length of x and the length of why? So here x is negative, right? Because we are uh, on the negative side. Here, here is negative side for x and here positive side for x. So here our x is negative, our y is positive. Still it's positive because it's something equal to here. So here y is still positive. Uh, actually it's positive one, uh, the length of this, uh, the whole length of y. So here is our y is positive. So let's uh, say we have a degree of uh, 210, okay? So here is 180 and 210 will be something like this, right? Let's say here is 30 degrees. So here all is equal to 210 degrees. So when we come to here, uh, as you can see, when uh, when I draw my right triangle, okay, so here uh, our uh, actually here is our x is negative and also our y is negative. Uh, you see, here is minus one, so here is a minus side, and also for y axis here uh, here is the minus sign. So here our x is negative and our y is also negative. Uh, we learned quadrants, uh, so here is uh, here actually it's the same. 
these are uh, on the quadrant one this is also quadrant one and this is quadrant two okay this is quadrant three so we can say that okay we can say that quadrant one at quadrant one let me write this because it will be easier quadrant one x is on plus side and y is on the plus side right so x is positive y is positive when we come to quadrant two let's look at here we have uh, x as minus negative and our y is positive right so our x is negative and our y is positive when we look at our quadrant three here so here as you can see our x on the negative side and our y is also on the negative side so both of them are negative right when we look at quadrant four we don't have here but let me draw here really quick let's say this is our unit circle okay we have uh, this is quadrant four so here we have let's say this degree okay here is 45 as you can see x here is on the positive side right so x our x will be positive and our y on the negative side so our x is positive and our y is negative so you might need these uh, information actually you will need this information uh, you will see some questions and um, they will ask you about these quadrants and uh, the sign of axis and y's so coterminal angles what is the coterminal angles coterminal angles share the same terminal arm and the same initial arm for example here we have 120 degrees right so this length is our uh, initial arm and this one is our terminal arm right so uh, these coterminal angles they share the same initial and terminal arm let's see so here we have 120 degrees when we look at here as you can see this uh, this made this made one revolution which is equal to 360 degrees plus also this angle made 120 extra degrees which made this uh, angle is equal to 480 degrees right so here let's say uh, our angle is 360 degrees okay it made one revolution what was the one revolution one revolution is equal to 360 degrees plus it made extra 120 degrees okay and then the total is 480 degrees but still it has the same terminal and initial arm as 120 degrees when you we look at here this angle made two revolution which is equal to two times 360 it is 720 right 720 degree plus extra 120 degree which makes this equal to 840 degree as you can see as you can see it, it still has the same initial arm and same terminal arm so when we look at here we, we still have the same arms right but here uh, the direction is the on the opposite side which makes it actually minus 360 degrees plus 120 degrees why because it goes to the minus uh, direction negative direction so this will make this angle is equal to minus 240 degrees so this angle is equal to uh, 240 degrees of course it's minus and as you can see uh, they all just they uh, they all just uh, they all make extra uh, revolutions and we all we do is at the same amount of degree and when these kind of unit circles happens we call them as coterminal angles let's continue with the principal angle the principal angle is the angle between 0 and 360 degrees 
the coterminal angles of 480 degrees, 840 degrees and a minus 240 degrees, they all share the same principal angle of 120. So how we do find that? Uh, for example, we did, uh, we did before, for example, for 480 degrees, we do like 480 degrees. This is equal to 360 degrees plus 120 degrees right so here we take uh, we take out this 360 which is extra here this is extra one revolution so we take out this 360 degrees and this 120 degree is our principal angle let's say we have uh, 400 degrees okay so 400 degrees we subtract Again, the same thing. We subtract 360 degrees from 400, okay, subtract 360 degrees, which is equal to 40 degrees, right? So this is the principal angle of 400 degrees. So we can say that the principal, uh, the principal angle is the first positive angle less than 360 degrees, okay? So let's look at this example. Here we have what is the principal angle of 2450 degrees. So when we have like here we have very high degree, all you need to do is divide this angle by 360. So you will find how many extra revolution you have and you will subtract that amount from this angle and you will be able to find your principal angle. Let's do that. So when I divide 2450 degrees by 360, so it will be five, no, it's six times three, it's 18, so it's six, right? Six times zero, it's zero, it's six times six, it's 36. Uh, three, uh, 6 times 3 is 18 plus 3 it's 21 so when I subtract this from this it's 0 here we have 9 here we have 2 and it's 0 so you know here from here we see that this 290 actually degree this is our principal angle okay this is our principal angle and this six means this six means is our extra turn this is our extra revolution so this angle which means this angle made six extra 360 degrees okay 306 uh, uh, revolution and after that plus 290 degrees and we uh, it made it 2450 degrees so all you have to do is to find how many three extra 360 degrees you have you subtract, subtract that amount and then you will be able to find your principal angle now let's see how we find the principal angle when we have a negative angle uh, as you can see in this example we have what is the principal angle of minus 1400 degrees so when we have a negative sign negative uh, degree here it means this angle is made by a rotation in the clockwise direction not in the counterclockwise direction right let's see this is our unit circle so this angle is negative it means it um, it made uh, uh, it made a rotation in the clockwise direction like this so all we need to do is we will add the highest multiple of 360 degrees to this amount till we get any positive degree between 0 and 360 okay let's do that the multiple uh, the highest multiple of 360 let's find for this example so we have 360 degrees right so 2 times 360 it is 720 degrees to uh, 360 degrees times 3 it is 1080 um, when I multiply this by 4 it is 1440 degrees right these are the multiple of 360 degrees so from these uh, degrees which one should I add to make this minus 1400 degrees positive right so we have one minus 1400 degrees so I should add one of these 
instead of to make this angle positive. So as you can see, I should take this one, right, plus 1440 degrees, which will make this 40 degrees. So which means this 40 degrees is the principal angle of this minus 1400 degrees. So the first positive degree you get is the uh, is uh, is the your principal angle